I, you probably don't know me, but I am one of those 0.01 percenters that you hear about and read about, and I am by any reasonable definition a plutocrat. And tonight, what I would like to do is speak directly to other plutocrats, to my people, because it feels like it's time for us all to have a chat. Like most plutocrats, I too am a proud and unapologetic capitalist. I have founded, co-founded, or funded over 30 companies across a range of industries. I was the first non-family investor in Amazon.com. I co-founded a company called The Quantive that we sold to Microsoft for $6.4 billion. My friends and I, we own a bank. I tell you this, <laughs> unbelievable, right? I tell you this to show that my life is like most plutocrats. I have a broad perspective on capitalism and business, and I've been rewarded obscenely for that with a life that most of y'all can't even imagine. Multiple homes, a yacht, my own plane, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But let's be honest, I am not the smartest person you've ever met. I am certainly not the hardest working. I was a mediocre student. I'm not technical at all. I can't write a word of code. Truly, my success is the consequence of spectacular luck, of birth, of circumstance, and of timing. But I am actually pretty good at a couple of things. One, I have an unusually high tolerance for risk. And the other is, I have a good sense, a good intuition about what will happen in the future. And I think that that intuition about the future is the essence of good entrepreneurship. So what do I see in our future today? You ask, I see pitchforks, as in angry mobs with pitchforks. Because people like us plutocrats, because while people like us plutocrats are living beyond the dreams of avarice, the other 99% of our fellow citizens are falling farther and farther behind. In 1980, the top 1% of Americans shared about 8% of national wealth, while the bottom 50% of Americans shared 18%. 30 years later, today, the top 1% shares over 20% of national wealth, while the bottom 50% of Americans share 12 or 13. If the trend continues, the top 1% will share over 30% of national wealth in another 30 years, while the bottom 50% of Americans will share just six. You see, the problem isn't that we have some inequality. Some inequality is necessary for a high-functioning capitalist democracy. The problem is that inequality is at, uh, it is at historic highs today, and it's getting worse every day. And if wealth, power, and income continue to concentrate at the very tippy top, our society will change from a capitalist democracy to a neo-feudalist rentier society like 18th century France. That was, you know, France before the revolution and the mobs with the pitchforks. So I have a message for my fellow plutocrats and zillionaires and for anyone who lives in a gated bubble world. Wake up. Wake up. It cannot last. Because if we do not do something to fix the glaring economic inequities in our society, the pitchforks will come for us.